My name is Harvey Soitcher. I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I'm an advocate for electric vehicles. On June 25, 2019, I took delivery of my very first electric car, this beautiful Audi e-tron SUV, which happened to be one of the very first deliveries of many e-trons in Canada. It's also the very first of many models of electric vehicles that Audi has already introduced and many more to come. Today is March 31st and almost 21 months of ownership, I've already put over 51,000 kilometers on this vehicle. I would like to share with you my overall experience of my all electric powered Audi. I feel qualified to give you an honest review of my e-tron Quattro 55 as I've driven it in every possible condition. From the extreme heat in the summer to sub-zero temperatures in winter, driving in extreme thunderstorms to raging winter blizzards, in crowded city traffic to twisting mountain roads, on super smooth highways to off-road conditions, including the mud at low tide in New Brunswick's Bay of Fundy, traveling from the Pacific coast of British Columbia to the Atlantic shores of the furthest east point of North America in Newfoundland. Then I turned the car around headed west through the USA and all the back through country highways and super highways to the Pacific coast of California, then north back to my home in Vancouver. My e-tron SUV performed flawlessly. This cross-continent trip I dedicated to my late wife and named it in her honor, Marianne's Electric Drive, and was done in the summer of 2019. The purpose of this review is not only to give you my honest opinion of my Audi e-tron, but why driving an electric vehicle is the way of the future. Hopefully your next vehicle, whether it's a luxury brand like Audi, or a vehicle that will fit your budget, will be an emission-free electric vehicle. Either way, I hope you enjoy my review. Instead of going through all the amazing features that came with my car, both standard and optional, I'm mostly going to review the ones that really made a difference to my electric power experience, and the new way to power a car. When I configured my new e-tron with George from sales at Audi downtown, I first chose the color and I went for the Antigua blue. Not only I found it a fairly bright and unique shade of blue, but I wanted it to stand out, especially in the many photos and videos that I was planning to be taking during my trip. It certainly worked as I had comments every day from so many people saying they really liked the color. Since the styling of the e-tron didn't scream it's all electric. It looked like a new model, but similar to other Audi SUVs in their lineup. The color really opened up the opportunity to say that it was all electric. Most people I met were unaware that Audi even had an EV, as of course my e-tron was one of the first in Canada. And I had a lot of fun talking about how much I liked my new car, how I was managing to finding charging stations, how much range, and so many other questions about the car that I was more than happy to answer. The next choice were the wheels and tires. Since I was looking for ways to make my new EV as efficient and extend the range as much as possible, I chose options that would help me do just that. And especially important in the remote areas of Canada where I really needed to extend the range to make it from one charge point to the next. There were various options for wheels, 19 inch, 20 and 21 inch, and a variety of tires. Even though all the options were really nice, I chose the lighter 19 inch, more aerodynamic rims and combined with the Bridgestone low rolling resistance summer tires gave me at least a 10% increase in range when compared to the same vehicle with 20 or 21 inch rims and all season tires. The first key feature that was an added option but was instrumental is the adaptive cruise control. Unlike regular cruise control, adaptive cruise control uses radar to automatically adjust up to your desired speed to the traffic in front, as well as being able to set the relative distance you want to be from the car in front. It automatically adjusts for, by slowing down for tight corners, speeds up as it powers out of the corner. It automatically managed the electrical power going to the motors, which factored in the regenerative braking and coasting much better than I could do myself on manual and resulted in a much more efficient use of my battery and increased my resulting range. The next group of options were part of the upgrade technique package. I actually had to order this package if I wanted to order the adaptive cruise control, which was a must for me. It's a long list of options and some I really didn't care if I had them or not, but to get what I needed, 
I had to order the whole package. The following are the key features that were important and which I really needed. Navigation. The advanced navigation system was crucial in finding charging stations or hotels, restaurants along my route. It was super easy to use and most of the time I just pushed one button on the steering wheel to activate the voice command. I simply read off the desired destination where I was going and since my navigation connects with the internet, it shows the exact location of each destination. The onboard computer calculates the route, factoring in all the different parameters, including if it's uphill or downhill, outside temperature, average speed normally driven on the route chosen, as well as your past driving efficiency, and other factors. I was always made aware of how much range I had on my battery and how far the destination, and made sure that I was always able to make it. An upgrade to the Technique package is also the premium seats. These seats were fully adjustable, extremely comfortable, with loads of support, an adjustable four-way lumbar support, and so many ways to get the seats in the exact position that I liked. At the same time, you can set the position, including the mirrors, so when one of my co-pilots would drive and change the setting to suit them, I could hit one button and it sets back to my preference automatically, which also included the mirror adjustment. This navigation was extremely precise and gave me confidence that I could make it to my destination, especially if it was a charger in a remote location. Many of these chargers were not accessible on the internet. However, this wasn't a problem due to PlugShare, the app every EV driver uses to find chargers. Once I find the charger, I simply use the voice command or write it in the lower display and the computer does the rest. Now, most chargers are available through regular updates by my local Audi dealer and through the internet connections. If I chose a destination that is further than the range I have in my battery, the computer will ask me to find a charger on the planned route and will directly go there so I can make it to my ultimate destination. The heads up display, or HUD for short, is an option I really wanted. It's very similar to what's used in fighter jets so the pilot, or in my case, the driver doesn't have to look down to see your speed or turn-by-turn -turn directions. This also made my drive less stressful, not to mention safer, by keeping my eyes on the road. The HUD displays your current speed, the speed limit of the road you're on, a small image of the road map where you're on as well, as indicating the distance to your next turn, whether it's 50 kilometers away or as close as 5 meters away. To help to indicate exactly when to turn, there is a green vertical column made up of green square dots. It starts off tall, and as you get closer to the specified turn, the column gets shorter as you approach the designated turn until there's only one or two dots, and then you know precisely where you have to turn or take an exit off the freeway. When you're driving on roads that you've never been on, and there may be three or four possible left-hand turns or exit ramps in front of you, this feature was invaluable, and I rarely made a wrong turn. An important feature I used when driving at night was the lane assist feature. HUD shows a small car within two green dotted lines. It helps you keep focused and stay in your lane. If you start to wander, the lanes on the display turn red, and automatically the computer centers the car, and the steering wheel vibrates to keep you alert. If you still keep doing this, the car senses you're falling asleep and the seat belt jerks violently three times. And when this happens, you wake up for sure. Another safety feature is the Audi PreSense, which can detect and initiate with extreme braking if any obstacle is in your direct path so as to prevent a collision. This feature is always on if you're driving forward on a street or intersection or backing up out of a driveway. All e-trons emit an added engineered humming sound that warns pedestrians nearby. When backing up, the humming sound changes to a slightly higher pitch. There were other features in the Technique package that even though I didn't think I needed or wanted, but I quickly realized that they were indeed very appreciated or useful, and I did value the benefits. As standard equipment, the front windshield is made with sound deadening glass to enhance a really quiet ride. The Technique package added the side windows, which are using double pane acoustic glass to reduce road and wind noise even more. This complements the quiet ride coming from the electric drivetrain. When you are driving at highway speeds, the car is super quiet, 
which enhances a comfortable and relaxing highway road trip. Of course, the premium Bang & Olsen sound system sounds so much better and even greater when not fighting road and engine noise from a gas or diesel powered car. It makes any road trip that much more enjoyable. I use the ventilated front seats really only a few times where you can feel the air conditioning cooling your back and very nice to have when I was in the southern USA where the temperatures were often over 38 degrees Celsius. If I did live in a hot area, I can see having this feature being a strong selling point. The retractable sunshades on the passenger windows I have up most of the time. In summer, it keeps the car cooler so you don't have to use as much battery power for the air conditioner. The other benefit is security as it's impossible to see what's in the back of the car and keep valuables out of sight. There's a separate charger pocket in the center console for your smartphone. It has a built-in signal booster which really helps when you're traveling in remote locations. One of the features of the Audi e-tron are the three screens which Audi calls them MMI or multimedia interface. There are all touch screens with a haptic or physical feeling touch which feels like a real button plus an audible sound. You can also hold an icon or function down longer and drag it into whatever order you prefer on the screen. You can also drag popular icons onto your favorite menus bar. The first is a virtual cockpit in front of the driver. It's customizable for a variety of views to suit your wanted info needs or your personal preferences. From all the specs for range to a full map system on the GPS, it's very cool, but I pretty much like this view showing battery power meter, range indicator, pedometer, power level efficiency, and it really kept me informed on my range and destination info. All the views are controlled right from the thumb wheel and toggle button on the steering wheel. The power meter shows what available power percentage of the battery is going to the dual electric motors powering the car. It's kind of like a tachometer, but for electric cars. I use this screen in view 95% of the time, and it gave me the info I really wanted to help maximize my range. You can see when you slow down using the regenerative paddle in the steering wheel or the automatic one pedal driving as well when braking, the needle on the power meter goes into the charging area of the meter showing the battery is now charging and putting the energy otherwise wasted back into usable power for added range. You can really see this working when going down hills. On many sections of my trip through the mountains, I can add 10, 20, 50 or even 100 kilometers back on the battery depending on the elevation drop and length of the descent. By using regenerated braking, quite often the brakes are not being used at all or very little and as a result brake pads and rotor life are greatly extended. On all my trips I use a regenerative braking as often as I can. I really like the paddle shifters instead of the one pedal driving as they gave me complete control of the regenerative or regen braking and coasting. Pressing the left paddle shifter gives a light regen braking. Pressing it again gives a stronger regen braking. If I press the right paddle shifter, it reduces the regen slightly, and by pressing it again, it allows the car to coast with no energy being used by the battery, and this is easily felt when driving and viewed on the power meter. On the topic of coasting, the aerodynamics of the e-tron body has an extremely low drag coefficient of 0.28, which is lower than most family sedans, and it slips through the wind and adds to the quiet ride as well. Because there's no transmission and gears, there's no added friction, and this adds to the coasting efficiency, as well as, of course, to the range potential saving for the battery when you are going up hills or passing other vehicles, which this car does effortlessly. The second screen shows all the settings and controls for the car including the entertainment system, charging, range mode, steering wheel and suspension sensitivity, voice, air suspension height, comfort levels, connectivity to your smartphone like Apple CarPlay, sound mix controls, interior lighting, Audi pre-sense sensitivity and even car fragrance and so much more. Pretty much any settings and controls that allow you to customize the car Depending on what type of driving you do, whether it's on a super highway, city streets, or on off-road adventure, all the controls are presented well and easy to navigate. This screen converts to the monitor view when using the backup and overhead cameras, which also includes a 3D virtual 360-degree view. 
It's very helpful when parking, especially in very tight spots. The third screen on the bottom is your climate controls and allows you to customize not just independent drive and passenger climate, but rear seat climate as well. Near the top of the third screen, you can put in any presets of your favorite radio and satellite radio stations. The steering wheel has controls to allow you to keep your hands on the wheel so you can navigate pretty much all the controls. There is a button on the right for voice command, which is really helpful when using navigation. You can even ask the car to turn up or down the heat, and it will do it for you without touching the climate control screen. The steering wheel is of leather wrapped, and it feels great. The e-tron develops 355 horsepower, and in sport mode, the maximum horsepower is 402. The torque is an impressive 414 foot-pounds, and in sport mode, it's a whopping 490. When full power is unleashed, the dual motors propel the e-tron from zero kilometers to 100 kilometers an hour in only 5.7 seconds. In the regular mode, it's still very quick at 6.6 .6 seconds. Of course, having the famous Audi Quattro all-wheel drive standard on all Audis even performs better in the all-electric e-tron as the motors transfer power as needed in all road conditions and do it more efficiently electronically compared to the mechanical connections on the regular model lineup. It's important to mention where you can buy other electric vehicles with maybe higher numbers and higher range. However, in everyday driving, you never really need to use this extra power unless you want to impress your friends. Yes, the Tesla may get more range, but the e-tron gets me plenty of range and it charges faster so you can spend less time especially when using charging stations that can deliver 150 kilowatt per hour of power to the battery. Basically, that means in less than 30 minutes, you can charge the battery to 80% full from almost empty. Most times, that's all you need when you're driving on a long road trip. Almost two years ago, when I was planning the drive across North America, the charging infrastructure across Canada was few and far between, especially in Northern BC and the Rockies, across the prairies, northern Ontario and especially in Newfoundland, there were no high-speed chargers, no level 3 chargers, only the much slower level 2 AC chargers, which take almost 10 hours to charge my car fully from zero. Today the infrastructure has improved tremendously and high-speed chargers have increased at least fourfold. On a long road trip, there is never an issue finding high-speed charging options, including the Electrify Canada chargers that are now in strategic locations throughout the most popular routes in BC, Ontario and Quebec. As the rest of Canada shows more demand, Electrify Canada will keep opening more in all provinces. Etron owners receive two years of free charging sessions. Petro Canada now has about 50 charging stations coast to coast along the Trans-Canada Highway, and most of these chargers are capable of charging at a rate of 200 kilowatt per hour, which is four times faster than the standard 50 kilowatt hour chargers that most of the time you find. For most people, charging at home is where 95% of the charging happens. And it's way easier, takes less time, and did I say to get 350 kilometers from my battery only cost me around $9, or around $18 for 700 kilometers total. Compare that with gas at $1.40 or more per liter in Vancouver, and a car that has a normal range of 700 kilometers probably would cost you $100 to fill your tank. The gear shifter is very unique, comfortable for your hand to rest on, and super simple to use. Your palm rests on this solid leather covered pad, and just below you have control going from neutral to drive with your forefinger. Press it one more time and it goes into sport mode. For going from drive to neutral and then to reverse, push forward with your thumb. On the side is a button you press to engage park, and here's the button to put the emergency brake on and off. One of the best parts of an electric vehicle is there's less parts to put into the car. There's 80% less parts to be in fact. This means it contributes to more interior space. There's no transmission tunnel. There's even a massive glove box on the driver's side. I can almost put my whole forearm into it. It's a perfect spot for the owner's manual and I do put several pairs of glasses in there as well. Not included in the storage figures located under the lid of the cargo floor 
is a significant amount of additional storage. In addition to the space needed for the compact spare, you have all this extra space. Of course, most electric cars don't have a bulky gas or diesel engine, so you have some additional space under the front hood. It's called a frunk. It's not huge, but it has the jack and tool kit. I put my emergency road kit, cleaning supplies, as well as anything else I care to put into it. The room in the back seat is huge, with plenty of leg room and headroom. The rear cargo area holds 660 liters, and with the rear seats folded down, you get a massive 1,725 liters. Even though overall my car performs flawlessly, but there were a few issues I wasn't happy about. The first was my charging cable, which I left out in the pouring rain, and it was faulty. I had a minor leak coming from the sunroof. I had a rear right tail light burnt out. For about a month, my Audi app, the software, was an issue. There was a sensor in the windshield washer fluid that prevented it from, from performing properly. But despite all those problems, they were all dealt with quickly and they were all under warranty. I'm very happy with my Audi service department at Audi Downtown Vancouver. Whenever I needed service for scheduled maintenance, which includes software and hardware updates, seasonal tire changes, any warranty work, Colleen, the service manager and her whole team treats you like a special friend. My service advisors always explain what service needs to be done they're very responsive to any issues and always follows up in a timely manner to make sure I'm 100% satisfied, which I always am. Oh, I almost forgot. I always get a complimentary car wash and vacuum when I arrive to pick it up. Am I a satisfied Audi e-tron owner? Absolutely. This first all-electric Audi model has changed the way I drive. No way can I go back to a gas or diesel car. Not only do I feel like I'm making a small contribution to reduce greenhouse gases, saving lots of money on gas and regular maintenance. The way the car drives is life altering and puts a huge smile on my face every time I'm in the driver's seat. After all, it's an Audi.